Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've got a new uh, tool for you guys today. Um, I, and I'm willing to bet most of you guys haven't seen it or maybe even heard about it uh, just because of how new it is to the US market. And maybe some of you guys over the seas, maybe you've seen this tool before. But what I'm talking about is the engineer part number PZ81. This is the slip joint plier. And this specific model is the 250 millimeter, and I believe it is the only size that this comes in currently. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about this product here over the next couple of minutes and what it's similar to um, and what actually makes it unique currently in the tool marketplace. Now, uh, as I mentioned, this, uh, this product is the 250 millimeter uh, slip joint pliers. And uh, it is a very unique tool. Uh, the maximum opening, we'll kind of run down through here, kind of the options that it shows on. Uh, this is actually kind of neat. This is the card that comes with it. Obviously, it comes in packaging. There's the plastic packaging that comes with it. We'll chuck that. Um, but it has an adjusting, uh, adjusting jaws. Uh, it has a maximum opening of 60 millimeters. And it, and it depends, obviously, on what material, square, hex, uh, hex circle, circular, um, but the maximum opening would be 60 millimeters in this case. Um, we'll see here, and you can see, we'll dive into this in just a second, but the jaw itself has something that maybe some of you guys have seen before, uh, these vertical, as they call it, serrat serrations, that they have patented. And some of you may start to think in your head, where have you seen this before? But we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, it's kind of unique here. I love the Japanese. They like to put, uh, like in this case, it's I believe it's a dinosaur. And if you read this, it's actually called the Negisaurus. I could be saying it wrong, guys. Feel free to correct me. But uh, uh, Engineer actually does that quite frequently. I just get some of the other products online. Uh, they like to do these animated um, kind of placards that essentially you purchase your your uh, your tooling with. So. Um, Diving into the back, holds bars, hex nuts. And what I liked was uh, it does have 10 step adjustment uh, for the jaws. It's a different setup, and I'll show you here real quick. As you can see here, this isn't a traditional straight across or tapered. This is actually, it is tapered uh, going one direction, uh, but it kind of has a chevron esque design to it. Right, so as you squeeze it down, it's going to engage and pull itself down a little tighter. Now, going through some more of the specs, I found this interesting. Um, well, your weight, 320 grams, top width, 10 millimeters. But the hardness is actually a fairly good hardness at 58. Um, on their website, it's actually changed. It's a 60. Uh, so that's that's approaching like some good, decent uh, tool steel, or like for instance, like knives, high quality knives, high quality cutlery. Um, other tooling, uh, when you get up to 58, 60, that's, that's, that's a good hardness. Uh, material, obviously carbon steel, and down here it talks about what you can and cannot use it with, but uh, the product itself, and this is worth noting, it's a Japanese product, but in this case, this specific uh, plier set is made in Taiwan, which I don't have a problem with. Uh, so far, my uh, experience with Taiwanese uh, tools has been, for the most part, pretty good. So, anyways, that's a, a quick look at that. Let's take a look at the uh, the pliers. Let's dive in. So, these may look relatively familiar to um, some of you guys may have the Nipex or Knipex, however you guys pronounce, like to pronounce it. Um, these look fairly similar in design and shape as the Knipexes. Even the jaw, right? Uh, has uh, the serrations inside and then give you guys a little sneak peek here but overall construction of this <clears throat> um, kind of looks like it has like a black phosphate finish uh, as it says here 250 millimeters and here's the part number as well um, let's take a look at how true it is down the side it's pretty close, just off maybe a little bit. Handles are okay. It does have a, you can see here, it's obviously flat on the backside, but as you come down here, it's actually, you know, they try to remove some of that material 
right? Kind of like a, a half I beam setup on both the top and the bottom. What is interesting though is this piece right here, it isn't forged as one whole piece. This is separate. This is actually a steel piece that looks like it's uh, it looks like it might be riveted, but that that piece, there's no rivets coming through, so maybe that's pressed from the remaining material uh, from the pliers. So as you can see, that's pressed in there and halted together. The button here is a nice, it's got nice positive feedback to it, so it isn't sloppy whatsoever, it is nice and tight. Uh, I would say similar to an Epix, probably even stiffer than an Epix. Um, the jaws... We'll hop inside here. Uh, I've already kind of used these once, so don't judge them too much. But uh, it's actually nice and clean. Very well done. Uh, you will note that there is obviously a blank spot here. Uh, and this isn't uh, only engineer who's done that. Nipex has done the same as well as other various manufacturers. But... Uh, Obviously, this section here is what tends to bite down, while well, this tends to center it. So, um, there is a neat feature. Obviously, when you have it opened up all the way, and you're going into something, and you want to grab onto it, you actually just pull it until it grabs on, and you can squeeze. Right. So it's actually got a because of that taper, it allows the jaws to slide shut. Is it a smooth process? Not really. It's actually pretty rough. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite route of going. Uh, maybe maybe that's where they could probably loosen up that spring just a little bit so it's not so tight. Uh, but overall, fit and finish looks pretty good. I'll notice here on the front too, this was a little bit rough as they made that sanding uh, mark on the front of the jaws. But otherwise, this lines up just fine right in here, right? When we're talking about those vertical ser uh, serrations. Now, what does this remind you guys of? Um, I'm sure I'm gonna hear in the comments, but uh, many of you guys have van pliers. And you think to yourself, well, how do they have the same technology as van pliers? Well, engineer and van, van pliers are the same company. So engineer is for most of their domestic products. So when they, when they sell to Japan, um, they'll use the engineer, engineer name typically. And I'd say engineer fit and finish is, it's still nice, but it's not quite as crisp as the van pliers. And so van pliers was designed to sell overseas, most specifically here with the United States. Now you could get these engineer pliers um, online. I actually picked mine up on Amazon and had them shipped over. Now it is a little bit of weight, it is in a, it is in a quick ship, but uh, uh, it is essentially uh, the Japanese domestic version of van pliers. And they do make the other van pliers that are very similar to van pliers, right? They're traditional pliers. Um, they have their own versions and all of them for the most part are done in this green color. Uh, as you know, vampires are red, and they tend to have a little bit more extra padding on the handles um, and a little bit better fit and finish in some cases. Now, ask yourselves, is it possible to get this set, the Engineer um, PZ81? Can we get this as a vampire? Currently, no. Um, I scoured vampire, Vampire's website that is not currently available. So, uh, if you want to be the first ones to jump on it and get a feel for it, and maybe you want to show your buddies, hey... Check out these new uh, slip joint pliers that now have a van plier jaw, right? That allows for um, grabbing smaller screws, rounded off bolts, broke off bolts, or you're just trying to grab the threads. Now you have a different tool that does something a little bit different that, than what the van pliers can do. And I think in certain cases, I, th I believe that's going to be an advantage. Um, because the challenge, I think, with vampires, I, I, the good thing about vampires is I think you could go into tight spaces and easy, easily maneuver um, those tough to get to screws, bolts. Uh, I, I think there's an advantage to that. But 
I also think there's a distinct advantage to this in that you get a better bite, better grip, right, as you squeeze on these. And I'll, uh, while we're squeezing these, I wanna let you guys see too that there is quite a bit of deflection, right? I'm able, to, this is completely closed. Sorry, you can't get this all in the screen. But that is me squeezing these and it's deflecting that much. So I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, in this case, I think I want a little bit more material in these handles to be able to stop that deflection because that leaves a little bit of uncertainty as you're holding on to material. Um, but that aside, if you're dealing with small screws, bolts, right, and you're trying to get them inside this jaw, you're able to get a lot more clamping force. You are also able to, you know, let's say for instance, obviously you got some screws here, we'll go through this here and let's just let you guys see how it moves. But you're also able to grab on like so And then you're able to use this leverage, right? So here's your center point. You're able to put your hand out here and turn. You cannot get that much twisting and turning leverage with a traditional vampire. That is where, as you can see here, I'm actually spinning that out. Now, this is redwood, by the way, so it's not exactly super easy. It's, and it's like 20 year old redwood, so it's super tight. But so you guys could see, that allows you to back that out easily. I could get a good, strong, um, purchase on the screw. Now here's a small one, but you guys can see what's on here. So I just put various screws in here that you guys would, you know, see working on your car, working on your house. But let's give it a little shot right here. Look at this small screw. Get a nice little bite on it. Give it a turn. Comes out, no problem. Let's open up a little bit wider our pliers there you go now there I wish there was a couple smaller segments because this is where it's gonna get challenging is biting on these bigger ones okay there's actually a good spot right here so we'll try this wood screw this isn't there pretty good I left a little bit of a head off there so we could grab onto it but once again I mean it's it's in there tight guys but it backs right out Let's try, this guy's got a nice, difficult taper to grab onto. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, comes right out. And this last one, if you do a good bite on it, there you go. Oh, yeah, got it. So for all these, it does like, actually a really good job. You know, better than, you know, let's pull in our traditional set of channel locks. I've had these for years, right? And as you all know, that there's that's a challenge. You know, there's no there's no teeth, there's no bite to traditional channel locks. They're not going to be able to bite as well. Um, are they good for other things? Yes. They excel in other things. And uh, you'll definitely use those for those other instances. But in the case of trying to take these, you know, when these are all the way down in there... I think I can't even grab it on right now. It's already slipping off. I can't even pull, I can't even take that one off. I didn't want to hold on there. So, perfect example of right tool for the right job. Channel locks, not the right tool in this instance. Um, maybe we'll try the traditional nitpicks real quick. We'll do another uh, another video on these later. Let's just give it a nice little try with the nitpicks. That was loose enough already. That was already loose enough. I got a good death bite on it. This is doing all right, although these are already backed out all the way. But as you can tell, the teeth on your Nipix, let's zoom this in, are not made for grabbing that in that fashion. So another great tool. And you can see them side by side, right? The differences between the Nipix and the Engineer. I do like the ergonomics of the Nipix better compared to the Engineer. Um, but the Engineer is nice and it does do, right, the unscrewing of fasteners and small screws, broken off screws. It does do a good job at that. Now, let's test it out. We all know Nipix excels at grabbing onto pipe. All right, you're able to grab onto it. And maybe some of you guys haven't seen this, seen these videos before. Put this little support here as we try to do this. Let's open this up a little bit. Okay. 
I should be able to grab on this pipe. Now this is a stainless steel pipe. This is an inch and a quarter pipe. It is stainless steel. So it is very hard. So as you grab on with the net picks, you're able to grab on and you're able to then let go of the bottom with your fingers and then just use your weight to push. And it holds. It will not slip. So Nipex does a great job. Channel locks. Let's see if we get lucky here. Channel locks could actually do it too, I believe. Let's give it a shot. It takes a second to get a channel lock set up. It's a little bit wider. Okay, channel locks. Take a good squeeze and then push. And it almost did it. Um, so channel locks, not quite, but close. Now, let's try the engineer. How good is the engineer at getting a purchase on this pipe and not slipping? Now, initially, it feels good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go one more tighter because I don't want this to slip on me. Let's try it over here. Be a good bite. Push down. But when you let go, it slips. If you let go of your, your hand, it will slip on stainless. Now, maybe that's different on a lighter metal, but uh, I did this test earlier, and for whatever reason, the engineer, if you let off down here on your hand, it will pop off the pipe. Now, that to me is something that I do not like, especially for a design that is so inherently similar to the Nipex design. So my only gripe about this purchase is the fact that the engineer does not have the capacity of being able to bite on to a piece of round stock and then being able to release your lower fingers as soon as you get pressure. Um, now, over the years, I've used channel locks, so I'm used to always maintaining a firm grip. If you maintain a firm grip, it does fine. It will hold on. It's, it, it, it maintains that, that bite, that purchase on um, the round stock. But if you let go, and for whatever reason, or you're, you maybe your hand's fatigued and you let go, that could be potentially dangerous. Um, so my only real gripe is the fact that it's, it just loosens up. It, it, it lets go as soon as you let go of the bottom down here. Uh, my other gripe is, I don't know how much I love this design right here. Once again, this would be nice to be all one single piece. Much like Nipex, they keep theirs as one single piece. That's more expensive to build a product like this. Um, and that being said, price-wise, this one, I believe, is in the mid-30s on Amazon. Warranty-wise, um, you have your Amazon warranty. right? You're buying a product that's meant for the Japanese market. They do not give you a warranty above and beyond that. Um, if you buy, um, say, band pliers, band pliers do give you, I believe it's a four-year warranty within the United States. So that is a nice little bit of peace of mind to purchase that way. But all in all, uh, a little bit of a mixed bag. I like these. Will I keep them? I think so. Uh, especially for uh, screws and fasteners. This is something that I like. And... Um, I obviously have another pair, kind of similar, obviously the Nipex version of that. Um, I do love these, and I think these have their place, and we'll review these here in the future. But this product does allow me to get a better purchase and a better bite on, on uh, those smaller fasteners. So I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are. What do you think? Is this a good product? Um, would you guys add this to your tool collection? Um, and of course, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing. Uh, I love to uh, to review these products, and, and I'd like to see you know what your guys' thoughts and comments are. So obviously we all could have better tools, uh, both in the workplace and uh, for our daily uh, hobbies. So take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon.